in my own experience as a guitar teacher and performer, I have realized that there's a common thing that most of guitar players, I mean general speaking of course, both ignore or assume they already know, and that it's really important to help us to improve our relationship with the guitar. This element is related with any concept we are applying into the instrument, doesn't matter if we are on a basic, medium or a high skill level, and it can result as easy or as hard as we prefer to, but we will have to face it sooner or later if we want to take that step forward as a guitar players. I'm talking about the real and deep knowledge of how does my instrument works. I mean, what are the principal and biggest characteristics and particularities of the guitar, and what are the elements that makes it so different from other instruments. And even though these questions may sound kind of obvious, knowing the answers will help me to explore and explore all the different harmonic, melodic, and rhythmic possibilities I can find on the guitar, and consequently will help me to make me feel more comfortable as a performer of it. Among all these characteristics, just like the range of my guitar, or just like the fact that guitar is a transposing instrument, there is one in particular I really want to talk about, because it has a lot of implications on the logic of the fretboard, and the knowledge of it will help me to know better the way this complex matrix works. I'm talking about the standard 6-string guitar tuning. As we already know, standard tuning is based, most of it, on some sort of quartal logic, which means that most of its strings are tuned a perfect fourth far one from each other. And I said most of it because there is an exception that is the second string. Now it's precisely that element that will make guitars so different from other instruments that share the same kind of tuning, just like double bass or electric bass. But before going deeper into this particularity, we have to know that this kind of constant tuning, or quartal tuning in this case, will involve one of the biggest characteristics of these string instruments which is the possibility to find the same note on different strings and, of course, on different positions of the neck. Unlike other instruments like piano, in which you will find each note in just one possible place, on guitar, for example, you can play this C note on the second string, on the third string, on the fourth string, on the fifth string, and on the sixth string. Right? And well, this is where all this stuff starts getting more complex and more interesting too, because it results that these five notes are not really the same one. I mean, all of them will be notated on the same place of the stuff, but each one will have a different sound quality. And this difference will be perceived at the very first two examples. And this difference will get more obvious, of course, on the lowest and highest positions. Right. So, if I really understand how does my instrument works, I will be able to make the right decisions on what of these different possibilities should I have to play, according on what was I playing before, or what do I want to play after this note, or according on what kind of sound quality do I have to project, etc. etc. Now, at this point, this uh, this particularity may look kind of simple or really understandable because we are just playing one single note. But what if we take this characteristic and try to apply it into some more complex contexts, just like a sequence of notes, or just like the melody of a tune, or just like some improvisation phrases, or even just like some chord progressions? Well, let's take a look on what happens then. Well, 
Let's go to the first example. I will play a little sequence of notes, in this case, the first five notes of the A major scale. And I will find that I can start on the sixth string with my first finger, but I can also start with my middle finger, or with my pinky finger, but I can also play them all just on the sixth string, or start on the fifth string, or decide to play them all just on the fifth string. And I think there are a couple more of options, but I think those are enough to show how many possibilities do we have to play this little same sequence of notes on the same octave. Now then, we were also talking about this particularity of the guitar that we can find on the second string, B, which is tuned a major third far from the G string. We all already know that, right? But the implications of it will mean that we will find some sort of displacement or modification on the um, logic of the neck, the symmetrical logic of the neck. I mean, unlike other instruments like electric bass, which will have a perfect uh, quartal tuning, and this will uh, mean or this will let us keep the same fingerings for the same sequence of notes on different octaves, just like in this case. Right? I'm keeping the same fingering for the same sequence of notes on different octaves. My hand is not moving at all from its position. When I get to this second string, I will have to displace this, uh, this position in order to resolve this exception of the quartal tuning. So, did you see it? I had to move my first finger one fret, right? Not like here. In this position, my fingers remain in the same place, and also here, I'm holding the position, but when I get here, I have to displace this position, right? And this is the interesting part of this. Now, let's go to the second example. The melody of a tune. Being able to play the same melody on different octaves and fingerings will be really helpful to resolve any situation that can happen while playing it. Let's take, for example, the melody of a jazz standard song called Sandu, and I will play it first on the low octave, and after that I will play it an octave higher, and of course, I will have to find the proper fingering for that. I will play first the low octave, <laughs> say that I really choose carefully this fingering according to the melodic idea I have for this particular song, because I can play this legato sound instead of, for example, this plucked sound, which I mean that sounds kind of rough. So I will try to keep this legato sound I just told you, for my next fingering. So, 
so I tried to keep it as much as possible. And... Well, let's go then to the next example. A chord melody. As we have already seen, this group of strings will bring some really different possibilities that are not offered by the upper strings. Let's take, for example, a couple of bars of a chord melody over a jazz standard called Beautiful Love. I will play it first on the low octave, and after that I will play the same part of the melody one octave higher, and of course, with two different harmonic possibilities. Let's go to the low octave. <laughs> Right. Well, the knowledge of these two different possibilities, these are just two among a lot of them will help me to mix some ideas of the low octave and some others of the high octave. I mean, will help me to play some different ideas that I could not play just in one position. For example, what happens if I start playing the high octave? But when I get to this part of the melody, I go to the low octave. Let's see what happens. Let's go to the low octave. Sounds good. Let's go back to the high octave. Right? It sounds really, really good and it sounds really, really interesting. Well, let's go now to the next example. Improvisation. How can we use all this knowledge while improvising? Well, it will help us to find the proper fingering and the different possibilities we have to play a single melodic line. Let's take, for example, a blues line, and I will play it first on the same octave, but with four different fingerings. The first one... Right. I will end it on the first five frets of the neck, and the second one will allow me to hold my position on the middle part of it. And I will find another two possibilities on a higher positions of it. And... We can also use this to play the same melodic line in two different octaves, and it's just about, as we already know, uh, it's just about finding the, cor the proper sorry, fingering in order to keep the same idea. I will play this line first on the high octave. And let's go now an octave lower. that moment I will have to choose the best option for me to play this line 
in order of what do I want to play after or what what was I playing before, etc. etc. A chord progression. One of the hardest things on guitar is to keep the same harmonic idea in two different string sets. For example, I will play a 2-5-1 progression on C major, I mean D minor 7, G7, and C major 7. And after that, I will try to play the same idea on another string set. Let's see what happens then. So, if I want to play this same idea on another string set, I have to know my instrument and I have to find a proper fingering for it. I like how it sounds here. Right? It's not that hard. Well, in conclusion, we have to be conscious about all the consequences that the particularities of our instrument have. And after that, we have to try to understand how they are related with any concept we are learning or mastering. I think sometimes guitar players feel kind of afraid of getting loose into the fretboard, and the understanding of this particular characteristic I talked about in this video will surely help us to feel more comfortable and more secure as a guitar players. And well, that's all for now. I will soon upload some exercises focused on a development of the understanding of this characteristic over scales, chords, over melodies, over improvisation lines, etc. etc. So stay tuned. I am Christian Sanchez and if you like this video, please give it a like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So, see you next time.